please take note of these chapters on as we go on because in this section we'll be dealing with several things that are very important to your trading career we'll explain two major actions which we're going to be under that are taken throughout our forex you know, life then there's buy and sell market analysis how to analyze markets now i'm going ahead to your trading platform your broker and yourself I will configure, set, set, set up your own trading platform and then place your trades to make your money. Now we have to ask ourselves, where does all this money come from? Because in reality in life, when the money is lost, no money is gained. Take for instance now, we have a case of you go somewhere to buy something, let's say you buy, you buy goods and then you leave the place. Of course, you have to lose the money with you. So as to gain the object. And that person that gained the money is the person who lost the object or good which he gave to you. Okay, so you, actually, you happily lost that money so that you were able to gain a good and that person happily gained their money and happily lost the good. So no money is lost, no money is actually gained. There actually has to be what we call a transference of wealth. Someone loses the money, you gain. And someone gains the money, you lose. You go to buy something, you have to lose money. You sell something to someone, you gain money. So the main game in life is to make sure that whatever it is you are doing, make sure more money comes to you than the money you give out. It's the same thing that applies here in Forex. Where so now have to ask ourselves now, the money we gain, who loses it? In the ask, who loses the money? That we gain in Forex. It's simple. Every other person involved in the Forex market banks, governments, big time corporations, anybody traveling here and there, you know, changing currencies, even whole countries, and unfortunately at times, fellow Forex traders lose money. Take for instance now, there was a time whereby the dollar naira was 22. Now, please take note that throughout the course of our lessons here, anytime you see price like reaching this form, it's always the exchange rate. If I mention price, I'm referring to the exchange rate. So please take note. Now, take for instance now, to buy one dollar was 22 naira then. Okay? That was a lot some time ago, like say, in the 1990s and all of a sudden we had a case whereby it rose from 22 to 88 meaning that, meaning that previously you could buy a dollar for 22 naira and later on after some announcements after some adjustments in the economy and then there was a deregulation of the naira you had to buy a dollar for 20, for 88 naira now what effect does that have on the economy now okay for instance now a dollar sweet is that usually goes uh, is a dollar pack of sweets now. It usually goes for like say twenty two naira. Now you now have to buy it with eighty naira. A pack of sweets that goes for twenty two naira. You now have to buy it for eighty naira. Meaning that you have to pay an extra six naira just to buy that same pack of sweets. Meaning you lose the sixty six naira. Meaning for every single dollar commodity you purchase, you are actually losing sixty six naira. And then, who gains that money? The, the American. Every single American that is purchasing the Naira definitely be gaining back the money. We all lose. Ah, take for instance now we have a, let's say a lunch was, was like say going to cost us 22 Naira. And now, with just one dollar now, which is equivalent to 18 Naira, we could buy lunch for four people. Okay, so without doing anything, so we'll be losing 66 naira on every single dollar commodity he buys. And someone will just without doing anything, with just one naira, one dollar, still purchase times four what you normally would purchase before. Not because of a single announcement. But you know that some Nigerians made money during that period. I know that people that knew, people would have the knowledge. I had. Okay, for instance now, someone was gonna buy a thousand dollars, it's gonna cost him just twenty-two thousand naira at that time. He knew I had. A dollar was going to rise from 22 naira to a dollar to 88 naira to a dollar. So he bought 
let's say eight thousand dollars and go cost which cost him twenty two thousand naira. So now at that when the price now changed to it is naira to a dollar. You're not, you're not size to sell that one thousand dollars. You're gonna get eighty-eight thousand naira in return. You bought a thousand dollars for twenty-two naira to a dollar, and when the, the exchange rate increased to eighty-eight naira, you sold that one thousand dollars that he had purchased for eighty-eight thousand naira. He purchased something at twenty-two thousand. You sold that eighty-eight thousand. What is profit? He opened sixty-six thousand naira. That's because he knew I had. He bought it when it was low, and sold it when it was high. I made a profit there. That was doing for us. That's how we make our money. So even though the whole Nigerian economy lost money, there were still some people in the Nigerian economy that were still able to make money back. Now, at this point, we shall take on one of the basic laws of economics, which is the law of demand. Law of demand says that they are the price. They are the demand, rather. They are the price, and they lower the demand. The lower the price, meaning, if for like say many people demand for a certain commodity, the price shoots up. A lot of people find price that find that the price is going to get higher. Like say you have just one, you particular just item. That's why you have um, all these auctions. So a lot of people are bidding for that particular uh, commodity, and whoever gives the highest price takes it home. So the highest bidder takes home the price. And similarly, if like say we have people demanding lesser for a particular commodity, like say an old-fashioned version, uh, an old-fashioned equipment now. Few people will be willing to buy it. That's why we have closeouts, we have liquidations, we have people saying, okay, then like bazaar, like whatever. Just like eliminate that good out, um, out of their system and pass it into circulation because nobody really wants it to, then that much. So they reduce the price at very, very low prices. They, they sell them. They have, they have clearance sales and all those kind of stuff. Just make sure that all these goods get out of their system. So they can now produce more, uh, more, more, and then new ones. Okay. Another one is, if your company is good, your company has a higher perceived share value. And if company is bad, take like they say there are most there are scandals, there are this, there are that affecting that company. The share value of that company will be taken as very, very low. And I have seen is that if you have a, if economy of a country is good, you're gonna affect the currency. If the American economy is good, the American currency is very good. If the American economy is bad, the currency is going to be bad and you'll fall short. Now, we need to explain some uh, terms now. Taking a buy and taking a sell. Those are the only two actions we're taking basically in Forex. You have to know where you want to go buy, you have to know where you want to sell. Now, the, the delay is this you buy now so I can sell at a higher price. Remember, what, remember you bought a thousand dollars then at 22, 22 naira and you sold it at eight, eight naira to a dollar so you bought a thousand dollars for twenty two thousand naira at a low price of twenty two thousand naira so that you're able to sell it at a higher price of eighty eight thousand naira and make a profit of sixty six thousand naira and now similar and conversely you sell now so i can buy it back at a lower price or like say at a cheaper price. Let's say you take a sell of say one of your um, shoes. Like say there's a friend of yours like, I want this shoe, and they feel like I can't sell it to you. It's like okay, whatever price. Okay, so take the sell the shoe like say, um, one thousand five hundred dollars, right? Okay, that's actually too much anyway. What well, depends? Person say like buys for you like one thousand five hundred dollars now. So now you now go to the market where you n normally buy your goods, and that same shoe sold for one thousand five hundred. That same shoe sold at a high price of 1500 You go to buy it back at its lower price of just $150. So you make a profit of that difference there. You make a profit of that difference of 1500 to 150 You sold at a high price. So I can buy it back cheaper at its lower price. So you have the, that same pair of shoes back. And you also have profits with it. Another thing is that you can also buy when you know that price is going to go up. And you can sell when you know that price is going to come down. You buy at a low price of 22 so that you can sell at a higher price. You buy it now at 22 because you know that price is going to go up.
to 88. Similarly, you sell now at 1,500, so you can buy it back cheaper at 150. You can sell at a high price because you know a price is going to you can get that price at a lower price thereafter. Buy low, sell high. Now, another thing is you buy the good stock now, it's good because it's going to appreciate. Think for example, it's like say the shares for a certain company is like say fifteen dollars now at the moment per per share, and now you're gonna, and you know that it's going to rise like say twenty five dollar per share, meaning that you're going to make a profit of ten dollar on each unit as time goes by. You buy the share, the stock now. Because going to appreciate it. Term here, yeah, you have to take notice. Going to is like a future um, forecasting statement saying it is going to. It's yet to happen, but you know that it's going to happen. That's why right now you buy it at ten, at fifteen. So that later on, you get your share. It's equivalent to twenty-five dollar per share. Now you sell the bad bad stock now because it's going to depreciate. You because. That's why people ask people like crying and like put raising their hands into their heads when they know that this is a stocks they bought now have depreciated in value. So a good a good trader, someone who has inside info would have sold the bad stock, the stock now. So that when it depreciates, it won't be it won't be one of those that will feel the brunt of it. As a matter of fact, that stock is sold for like say let's say it's sold for like fifty dollars per share. When it, when the market now goes down comes down, let's say now comes as low as say ten dollar per share. You can buy it back at that price. You so that fifty dollar so that you, you can now like say let's say he, he holds his fifty dollars at one on one hand now. And then when now price drops like ten dollar per share, you can just out of that fifty extract ten dollars and buy that same share that you sold at fifty and still have a profit of forty with him. Buy the good. Similarly, in Forex now, since you are dealing with um, currencies, not commodities, not stocks, or whatever, so you are dealing with currencies now. So let's go back to where you're coming from. So if you buy the good currency now because it's going to appreciate. You sell off the bad currency now because it's going to depreciate. You buy the good currency now because it's going to appreciate. Because if you know that a currency is going to appreciate, what do you do to it now? You buy now. So I went, after appreciating it, you now set it off at a higher price of 88. You buy the dollar, which is the good currency, now, because it's going to appreciate in the future to 88 dollars to a dollar. You buy it now at 22. The reason I'm repeating this because that, that's like basically what you'll be doing in Forex, just buying and selling. You have to know when to buy and when to sell. You buy it now because you know it's going to appreciate. It's going to. The world is going to. Yet to happen. You buy it now at 22. So that when it gets to 88, you can answer it off. You sell the buy currency now because it's going to depreciate. Since you know what, what I'm going to do, if you know the direction price is going to take. Okay, let's go out there. Let's say you buy a currency for like say five. Let's say you buy, let's say commodity. Let's say it is the currency this time around for like say five units. When you now set off at ten there, you're making a profit of five units, right? And let's say, for example, like say you took a buy at that five, but this time this around you took a sell at fifteen. You make a profit of what? Ten units there. Buy at five, sell at ten. Profit of ten or five units. Buy at five, sell at fifteen. You make a profit of ten. Now coming to that side now, you sell at thirteen. A higher price of thirteen. And you can buy it back at eight. You sold something at thirteen. You can buy it back at lower price of eight. Meaning you make a profit of five units there. You see, have that same commodity at the end of the day, but you now have a profit of five units. What if you took, you bought it back? It, when all the price now came even lower than that, so like say three. So you sold at thirteen. You bought it back at three. You make a profit of what? Ten units there. So let's take this back again and see. You take a buy at five because you know price is going to ten. I make profits. Or you know that price is going to fifteen. 
We crop is there. Now you take a sale at 13 because no price is going to 8 or coming as low as 18. You take a sell because no price was coming all the way down so I could buy it back lower. You took a buy at 5 because no price was going all the way up to 15. That's where you take a sell. Now next question is how do you know? It's always the same question every, quest, every person asks. How do you know that price is either going up or down? Now, at this point, we shall take on one of the basic laws of economics, which is the law of demand.